Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, yeah, great to be speaking to a, a non-architectural audience. We normally speak to other architects, so this is a bit daunting, but kind of refreshing. So I'm Alison Brooks, um, founder and creative director of Alison Brooks Architects London. And my practice works in the UK, but also internationally. We have projects in Taiwan, Toronto, and lots of places in between. And we recently completed a building in King's Cross that you can see on the right here. Um, and interestingly, referring to the last speaker, the four pillars of my practice have been to deliver authenticity, generosity, civicness, and beauty. So, but at the same time, we're confronted by the, the this major issues of climate crisis and, and how do we build sustainably. So my, my question, um, my codex question, question for you is, can we design and build to reduce carbon and deliver beauty? And I'd like to give some context to this question. So we're all aware that since 2017, the world population is more than 50% urbanized. Cities are growing all over the world, and the diagram on the left shows the kind of centers of major urban growth, and this means construction, and that's the image in the middle. And you can see that's a typical construction site. Tons of materials, everybody on top of each other. Um, this is a, an issue of carbon. It's also an issue of waste. But as architects, we, you know, this is what we do. We want to build, to provide a high quality of life for all, and to produce places that are loved and places that last. And this is where beauty comes into the picture. But we have to address carbon. The construction industry accounts for 37% of global carbon emissions. And this is a combination of the energy required to manufacture as well as um, the transport and fuel used in, in the construction process. And there's also the issue of waste. Construction, demolition, and excavation waste are responsible for 62% of the UK's total waste in landfill. So we need radical cross-sector coordination to revolutionize both the buildings, the way we design, and the construction sector towards a net zero future. This requires structural change in how we design, communicate our designs to the construction industry, and how we build. And this is where digital craftsmanship comes in. So I thought I'd try to unravel for you a bit of the mystery around how architects work and how it, the way we work has changed over the past 30 years. So you can see on the left, there's uh, 1985 when I started, um, just before I graduated and started working in the UK, architects drew with paper, with pencils. That changed as computer and digital technologies emerged to CAD, computer-aided design, the 90s. Then 3D CAD. Then 3D CAD building information modeling in really since 2010, 2015, 3D BIM information, data-rich, federated models. This is where we're designing 3D environments. There's information embedded in the every component that we draw, digital information. And now I call it 4D BIM, where we are producing data-rich content. And that content, our drawings, our 3D models, are being fed directly into the construction and manufacturing industry. So we've gone from a siloed uh, position, sort of working alone, the myth of the architect genius working by themselves, and suddenly there's a building. It's, it's a collaborative environment. It takes huge teams, and really what we do is about managing complexity. Um, so... In addition to this, we are now designing with computational tools and 3D modeling software 
like some of the ones I've listed here, like Ladybug, um, Passive House, Carbon Calculators, One Click, Life Cycle, uh, life cycle Carbon, Assessment Tools, uh, Parametric Numerical Design Assessments. And these are all kind of amazing tools that help us analyze our buildings in body carbon, thermal performance, efficiency, cost, simultaneously as we design. We work with our structural engineers to optimize structural frames, to compare timber frame, to steel frame, to concrete frame. And this um, is, it brings me to an important point, which is also about bringing loads down to the ground efficiently. You all know, and I'm sure have seen, fantastic buildings with huge cantilevers, sort of boxes shooting out, creating uh, dramatic spaces. Cantilevers are not an efficient way of bringing loads down to the ground. They use incredible amounts of steel, incredible amounts of concrete, and they are huge carbon sort of culprits. <laughs> so architects need to think about how to bring loads down to the ground more directly to reduce carbon. So um, my mission and that of my team at Allison Brooks Architects is to provide our clients with highly bespoke design solutions that respond to the context and culture of each project, and that create a dialogue with history that is at the same time a vision of the future. So our recently completed building in King's Cross, Cadence, represented here on the right, was inspired by St. Pancras Station. It's exuberant Gothic revival spirit, it's incredible craftsmanship, and I interpreted that language and that character and its qualities, such as its arches and its distinctive orange brickwork, so that it is a, expressed as a contemporary or within a contemporary mixed-use building. And this is now a landmark building at the top of the King's Cross um, development. But the, maybe the most radical thing about this project is that it's 80% constructed off-site. It represents a transformation in how we architects are becoming part of the construction industry, the manufacturing supply chain, through our use of digital communication and computational tools. And this is called, the DFMA is the acronym, Design for Manufacture and Assembly. And the word assembly is a really important thing. It's manufacturing and then assembling the manufactured components. So it's moving away from transporting thousands, if not millions, of small parts to construction sites, having workers work on scaffolding, assembling these thousands of small parts and pieces, and the resulting waste and um, lack of safety that that traditional sort of thousand, maybe 2,000 year old process represents. So here you can see both a kind of familiar two-dimensional construction drawing on the left, which is a setting out of the bricks for the arches in our project in um, King's Cross. Of course, it's not hand-drawn. It's a product of computer-aided design, but it's also a product of parametric scripting tool, Grasshopper, the sort of um, script on the top right is a Grasshopper plugin that we plug into our Rhino model that we then embed in our Revit model. And this automates and describes the arrangement of complex elements like the brick arches. And there are 28 different sizes of arch, different widths, different heights in um, cadence. <clears throat> each with a bespoke Bezier curve, multiple concentric brick voussoirs for every arch. So our digital communication tool and design environment has enabled us to communicate this information, feeding directly into the construction and manufacturing process. And down here you can see a sort of BIM model which incorporates all the structural, mechanical, electrical, and architectural data in one federated model. So here is an image of the building under construction, but it's under construction in a huge factory up in Sheffield. And this is Explore Manufacturing, which is the manufacturing depot for Lang O'Rourke, who are the main contractor. And here you can see the 
Is this pointer work? No. Um, yes, sort of. Here you can see the formwork for the facades, which is being, which is laid on the ground horizontally. The the pattern the um, of all the brick has been CNC cut into the formwork so that every brick is laid perfectly horizontally on the ground. <clears throat> and also the bricks have been cut in half because you don't need to use a whole brick when you're pouring con concrete into a form. So half the number of bricks are used, laid very precisely in a safe climate controlled environment. And this is uh, the way you can actually transform construction from being uh, one of working, you know, subject to the weather, subject to workers getting to sites, climbing up scaffolding, um, sort of confronting all of the um, unknowns of a construction site. This completely transforms that. The result, uh, you can see also the arches or the facade panels, they're tilted up. They're pointed in the, in the workshop or in the yard, and then they're assembled. And the construction is really a series of lifts. It's all about crane time. It's all about minimizing the number of lifts. If you have 1,000 lifts in your building, it's much better than 2,000. So it's a completely different way of thinking about construction. So the result here um, is both about the urban experience, what you perceive when you walk around the building, that um, you can appreciate the craft that's gone into it, but it's not a craft that happened on the site. It's a craft that happened both through our tools, our, collab <clears throat> our collaborative framework, and um, the, the whole integrated process, and the kind of freedom to a certain ex extent that that process uh, affords us. Um, and that, that the image in the middle is a, um, of the courtyard at the center of the scheme, and on the right, one of the, one of the homes. It's, uh, it's a 15,000 square meter building with 153 homes and uh, about 3,000 square meters of um, retail and commercial space. So um, this is the result. This, it's the result of a, of a process. It's the result of a new way of thinking about construction, tr transforming the way we design with digital tools, the way we communicate, and I think taking us to a net zero carbon future. So with design for manufacture and assembly, we can be cleaner, we can be greener and leaner, and, and we are now part of the team, the construction team. The architect is not separate, and our information is, is actually equally as uh, relevant and uh, able to be manipulated, used, costed, and um, streamlined to help our construction partners achieve um, better outcomes, in particular, reducing waste. So yes, we can design and build to reduce carbon and deliver beauty. Let's do it. Thank you.